We are doing a Lazy Susan today. I've done a few of them before, and uh, this is a commissioned one. And um, the color scheme is based off of a room that she sent me pictures of, and it's white and black, and a little bit of a mint green with some deeper shading, and a peachy rosy color with a little bit deeper shading. And so what I have is always my white. Look, a Starbucks cup. Put a piece of tape over the lid, you've got an instant sealed cup. So I've got a, an extra thing of white, but I have a squeeze bottle of white as well. And I've mixed up my mint green. It's in a Cracker Barrel cup, but it's foam, so I don't put silicone in here because I don't know if silicone would eat it up. <laughs> but um, I stuck I stuck a knife. This is a plastic knife to start with. I stuck it through the hole. I mixed this up just recently, but I was just keeping the lid on it until I started the video. So here's my mint color. This is the first time I have used the latex wall paint, and I picked up uh, Valspar color sample pre-mixed on the shelf at Lowe's and this is uh, Mystic C. I think it was three to four dollars somewhere in that range and it's uh, eight ounces so a pretty good deal for paint so I have that but I did add a little bit of this it's it's, a, it's not a standard color. I've mixed it together, but mostly it's that phthalo green and blue that's kind of a really deep teal green turquoise color. Really deep. And, I, and it's very vibrant. I love it. So I have that, which I use very sparingly. But I did add some to this because I felt like it was a little too pale because I am going to add some white and the white will kind of lighten things up already. So I've got the, the color that's just a little bit deeper using this, but I'm also going to use this in the Dirty Pour. And then I've got me um, kind of a coral or salmon color. I mixed the color myself. This is like a soft rose. I would call it a rose to a burgundy color, and I mix that as well myself. I don't know if I'll use this, but this is a little bit like a charcoal gray. It's got a little hint of brown. It's a warm gray. It's got a little bit of brown in it, but it's not as drastic as the black, so I do have some of that. And in this cup, it's just really pretty. It is... Uh, no, it's rose gold. It's deco art, dazzling metallics, and it's rose gold. And I thought that would be pretty with the salmony color, so I do have that mixed up and ready to go. This is my piece of. I have used wood for the last three Lazy Susans I did, and I had a little problem with it warping, <clears throat> and had to continually put coats of paint and keep it laid out flat to get it to not warp. This is MDF, which is a, it's a man-made, manufactured wood. They build cabinets and furniture and a lot of different things from it. It comes in different thicknesses. This is three quarters of an inch. So it's fairly, and it's heavy, but it's compressed, it's super solid, and it's supposed to be guaranteed not to warp. So that's why I'm doing MDF, and it's about it's an 18 or 19 inch circle. <clears throat> My white is, I'm out, almost out of the bottle, Artist Loft Acrylic, Flow Acrylic. My black is Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. I always use those. Those are mixed. Well, all everything is mixed with a flood flow trawl, and I think I held those bottles upside down, I'm sorry about that. Um, flood flow trawl, latex based because you're using water-based paints, 
so you can this is only made to go with water-based paints do not get the oil-based Floetrol there is a different one it's made to go with oil-based paints only so this is water-based and this is a quart you can get it in a gallon at Lowe's uh, Home Depot and places like that or online so it is in my mixture of all my paints every color about 50 50 one to one ratio sometimes a little less it just depends but you kind of just have to get a feel for your paint and the the fluidity of it and make sure that it's a nice creamy consistency the other thing I use is treadmill lubricant which is hundred percent silicone you can always use liquid wrench WD-40 those kind of sprays what I did is I sprayed some into a little you know, dollar squirt bottle I got somewhere and you spray it in and you let it sit and then this way you don't have to spray it and have fumes and things like that but you can use the little thing from the spray thing and let let the liquid drip off of the end of it into your paint look like it did on the board here um, and it's it has a very strong odor for sure this one you don't really smell like you do the sprays but this is in you know this is sprayed into the canister here or spray bottle and this way you can control it not spray it you can drip it in if you need to but I'm going to use in this demonstration treadmill lubricant and some of the bottles are pre-mixed well the black and white I never put silicone in this bottle is pre-mixed it already has the treadmill lubricant in it the other colors I typically put the treadmill lubricant in but today I'm not going to I'm going to try something a little bit different and um, just basically see how it works putting it between the layers of color so um, we're going to see how that goes I want to make bigger cells if I can and another thing I was thinking this is a really inexpensive thing I do a lot of swiping and other art type videos and um, this little three pack came from Lowe's for about three dollars and these are wonderful they've got a flat edge for spreading or swiping that kind of thing so I wanted to point that out and I am gonna I'm gonna start this with just a little bit of white you know, it's got Floetrol in it so it's not opaque where you can't see through it it, you know you can see through it because it's got flow trawl which will thin it out and you know a little bit of water but what this will do is when I put my dirty pour on top it'll make it move faster float better I've got this on little bathroom cups for now just to raise it off the table so it's closer to me and um, when I get to the point where it's time for it to go over the edges I've got a metal full pan from the dollar store and my excess paint will hopefully drip in there and I'll keep my table from getting too terribly messy I have butcher paper on the table and it has the shiny side up which is plastic coated so it seals your table surface and you can make skins from the paint that dries on it and you can also wipe it down if it's just got a few drips you can wipe it down very easily because it's a clear coat of plastic so it's awesome for your tabletops and let's see I think I showed you everything so I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this a little bit out of the way I'm 
I'm going to do a larger dirty pour and a smaller one in case I need extra paint for any reason. Because sometimes I'll pour it and I still want something added to it. So I usually make a little extra just in case. So I'm going to start with white. Do the mint. A little bit of silicone. Do a little bit of this charcoal color. A little bit of the rose gold. The deeper rose. This coral color. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of the deep teal, but not a lot. White again. Back to this mint. Coral. The rose, coral again, rose gold. Let's see, I did a little bit black. Always keep a damp paper towel around. Charcoal. White again. I had mixed up a metallic gold, but to me it didn't work with the other colors. It's a little bit too brassy looking, so I'm not going to use that. So, and then I forgot to throw the silicone in. Wasn't that crazy? So, I'm going to drop a couple of drops in there. I get busy and I'm thinking I've got silicone in it in a lot of the paints and I don't. So we're going to see what happens here. Now, I'm going to move my cups for now. Here's my metal tray. This is going to work good to hold it as well, as long as it's level. I'm going to do this other cup too, just for the heck of it. White. Mint. Treadmill full. Rose. Black. Coral. A little bit of the charcoal. Back to the mint. Teal, treadmill, and a little squirt of white. Okay, so I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna put that one aside. That's gonna be my backup plan. It looks pretty on the top. I don't, I don't like to do the stick through it. Um, I like to let the colors kind of stay where they are in the cup. So. We're going to see how this goes with just pouring it the way it is. And a lot of people do the flip cup, which is going to be difficult with such a heavy piece. So I'm not going to flip, I'm going to just pour.
just letting it sit for a few minutes. We're going to wait just a little bit. I'm not going to torch it, and I don't use a torch, I use a heat gun. I'm not going to torch it or heat it because I don't want a bunch of tiny cells. I would like to keep them big. I may torch it at the end though, once they're stretched out, once I move it around. This one I'm going to add a little bit more of that rose gold. I am going to go one time through it and that's it. Okay. Let's see what happens. I don't want all that pink there, so I'm going to let this go over the edge. Then I'm going to come this way. And now I'm going to go back. See if I can get rid of some of that pink at the side there, which is going away, which is good. Now I'm just making sure my edges are at least coated. Look, see? Messes. Unexpected messes. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. I just spilled my cup of paint. I like some of this. It's just, um, I'm going to see the teal is popping out on here, which is interesting. So I like this a little better because there's some black and they've got, I think it's a black and white checkered rug. Um, no, the rug wasn't black and white, but I saw black and white somewhere. 
and <clears throat> get a little bit of the rose color here and there. The rose gold is kind of mixed in very softly. The mint is prevalent, which I wanted it to be. Um, I think I wanted a little bit more white, but it may pop through as it dries. So I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is. And it will change as it dries. It's, this will not be the finished look, but I like the way it looks at this point. So I'm going to go with this. making sure all my sides have some coverage. This is photo paper, and um, I use it either for backgrounds for artwork, or I do jewelry from using this. It's just a really cool way to create some beautiful things.
Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thank you.